The title of my video today is Getting Creative with Bokeh. I'll be using the Blur Gallery filter in Photoshop today, an often overlooked filter. It's super powerful. You're going to enjoy this one. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to add some nice creative bokeh effects to this image. We're going to use a filter that's not used very much, at least in my opinion in Photoshop, and that is the Blur Gallery filter. I'm going to show you some really cool tips and tricks when using that filter. So let's get started. I'll start by duplicating my background there. That's Commander Control J. I'll come up here to Filter. And we're going to go into Blur Gallery. Now inside of Blur Gallery, we have different choices. Field Blur, Iris Blur, Tilt Shift, Path Blur, and Spin Blur. I'm going to choose Field Blur. Now when you launch this Blur Gallery, even though I chose Field Blur, and that's the one that's selected right here, but we also have the other blurs in here as well. So we can try different things in here if we want to. Today I'm going to be using this Field Blur because it's one of my favorites. And you can get really creative with it. Let's take a look at this interface. Now, right off the bat, you see I have a blurred image here, and I have this circle in the center of my image, and you see on my cursor, I have this thumbtack. Every time you click your cursor, left click it, you're gonna add another thumbtack. We're gonna start out with the default thumbtack that's in the center of the screen. For the rest of this video, I'm gonna call these thumbtacks control points. I just think it makes more sense. Whenever you drop one of these control points, you see this little line here? This is the amount of blur, so you can take this and you can drag it and add more blur or less blur. In fact, you can remove blur by taking it back to zero blur. Uh, I generally don't drag this line. I find it easier just to come over to the right side of the interface and drag this blur here, okay? And to me, it just works, works out better. But if you want to drag it here, you can, or you could do it over here, whichever you like. Okay, but I like to start out and find a point that I want to keep in focus. Like, for instance, this gentleman's head right here. I want him in focus, okay? So what I want to do is take the blur and reduce it to zero pixels. And when I do, you see I have that control point there, and there is no blur on him at all. So that's how I like to start. And now I can start dropping more control points down. Like for instance, I definitely want this area up here blurred. So I'm gonna drop a control point right here. And you'll notice that area goes out of focus. Now I can give it, I can take it more out of focus by dragging this to the right or give it less out of focus. But what I wanna do is create a nice um, bokeh around these folks here that are having such a great time out in this uh, raft and um, just draw the emphasis to them. And there, it looks like they're heading towards this rock right here. Let's hope they don't hit it. I don't believe they did actually. But I'm gonna go ahead and drop another one of these points back here. And I think back here, I'm gonna give it a little extra blur. All right, that's cool. Now right in here, I think I want this to go out of focus. So right here, I'm gonna add a little bit of blur. Now when I've done that, I've knocked my probably his wife or girlfriend out of focus, probably his wife. I'm gonna click right here and I'll take the blur down to zero pixels. And you'll notice I removed the blur there. So that's pretty cool, right? By the way, if you like lens baby lenses, this is a great uh, tool to simulate those lens baby out of focus type effects, which is kind of what I'm doing here. I don't know the maximum amount of these uh, pins or thumbtacks that you can drop down, but I think it's quite a few. Now, I think I want to add another one right in this area, just to add a little bit of blur in here. Now, this is set at 15 pixels, so if that's too much, I can pull this back a little bit. Yeah, and I think I'll do that around eight pixels. That looks good. Now, this or went out of uh, focus here, so I can drop one here. And let's set this one at zero pixels. And see, I can bring that back in, which is nice. Now I think I need one in this area right here, so let me drop another one. So you can just keep playing with these, keep dropping them in. And maybe let's pull back on the blur amount on this one just a little wee bit. Okay, something like that. That looks pretty good. You can also drop control points outside of the image. Like I can drop one out here. And uh, let's add more blur in this area. Not too much, I'm trying to make it look realistic. Maybe something like that. What I'm trying to do is get a nice little area where they're 
you know, you can see where it's in focus coming around this corner here like this. And then I have this uh, rock right here. I'd like to bring it a little more into focus here. It's getting some of the blur from up here. So let's drop a pin on it. And now let's pull it back. Now we could pull it the whole way back to zero and let it come totally in focus. But I think I want a little bit of blur in it because it'll, in my opinion, maybe look a little better. So maybe a tiny wee bit of blur on there. And I like that. Now I can even make my image smaller. And let's say, what if I wanted to drop a pin out here just to bring this area out of focus like here and yeah, maybe, maybe another one over here. And let's draw this one a little bit more out of focus like that. But see how you can play with it. You can move these around. And maybe what I'll do is I'll drop one out here just for this area right in there. Give that a little bit more. Let's see what happens if I bring it up. Now, I don't want to bring it up too much. I just want to take it a little bit out of focus and maybe I'll drag it in a little bit more. Okay, something like that. That's looking pretty good. I feel like I'm losing a little bit of blur here, so I'm going to drop another pin here. And I think that's looking really good. Let me make my image larger now. So remember that tip. You can also put points outside of the image. Now, at any time you want, you can click on one of these pins or control points and tweak them up. Like, let's give this one a little more blur, okay? Maybe this one, let's try a little more blur on it. Okay, that looks pretty good. And let's see, let me see if I want to add any more blur on this one. Okay, and I think I'm going to put one right here. And just add, yeah, I think that's good. Let me see what happens if I add a little more blur on it. Man, yeah, maybe just a little bit more blur. Okay, now that kind of looks like the uh, lens baby type, type look here. Um, and on this pin, I think I'm going to click it and give it, I have four pixels. Let's try like two pixels. Yeah, two pixels. It's still out of focus, but it's... You know, it just looks more natural because I want our attention to be drawn to these folks in the boat. They are having, or the raft, they're having so much fun in there. Now, turn your attention up here to the menu bar up here. You see this right here where it says save mask to channels. Go ahead and click that. I highly recommend that you always click that because you may need that down the road. And I'll show you what we use that for when I bring this back to Photoshop. But just remember, I, I checked that on Save Mask to Channels. We use it and I'll show you how we can utilize it. I think I'm really happy with the way the bokeh is looking on this image. And we're not done yet, but notice over here on the right-hand side of the interface, we have this section here called Effects, Motion Effects, and Noise. Let's click on Effects first. This is a cool little section right here, and this deals with uh, light bokeh. Whenever you're doing bokeh effects and you have light, sometimes when they're out of focus, they get lighter, and we can adjust those effects with this light bokeh. Okay, so watch some of these lighter areas here. I'm going to move this light bokeh to the right, and you'll notice when I do that, see some areas start to pop out. Not these pins, but back in here. See these little bokeh bubbles back here as I start to drag this light bokeh over. Then you can adjust the light range here. In other words, like you can bring more, more areas in. In other words, this is just like a luminous slider really is what it is. In other words, I can just let the very light areas get this light bokeh or I can drag it out into more of the midtone areas and make it look really ugly. But you're mainly going to be sticking around with the really light areas. So like you can see like over in here and back in here somewhat, you can see those bokeh bubbles and uh, like that. And then you have this light bokeh. We can, again, we can make it lighter or we can just pull it back. We can just let a little bit of that show through just to give it a nice realistic bokeh effect if you want that. In this image, I don't think I want it, but I just want you to know it is there. We can also color that bokeh with this, with this bokeh color so we can add color to it as well. 
And so that's, it's probably just using the color that's in the image. You don't, it doesn't let you add your own color to it, but it's drawing the color around the bokeh. Okay, so it's more of a blue there. But you can add color to it as well to your bokeh. But for now, I'm just going to take this light bokeh. If you don't want to use the light bokeh, just drag this the whole way to the left and you will not have it. So that's one thing you can do in effects. The other thing is called motion effects. Now, on this particular field blur they're not available they're only available on path blur and spin blur but let's click on noise this one is very very important because whenever you have an area that's out of focus any grain that you had or noise that you had it gets totally obliterated and that could make your image look fake but this grain will take care of that issue so what i want to do is zoom into my image okay so we can really zoom in and let's really take a look at the grain pattern on this guy's head right here. And we can see that amount of grain, right? Now, what we can do here is come over to grain. Now, there's different things we can do here. There's a drop-down menu. Now, we have different types of grain or noise. We have Gaussian noise, like a uniform type noise, or a grain. And generally, I find I like to use the grain. I think it looks more realistic. It's more like a photographic in my opinion i'll just drag this to the right and stop where i think it kind of matches it and right around that 6.21 i think that's pretty close but take your time and make sure you get it right but i think that i think that'll be good right there and if you want to get really nitpicky you can adjust the size of the green the roughness the color and the highlights if you want to but i think we're good I'm just going to go ahead and zoom back out, and I think I'm ready to send this back into Photoshop. All we have to do now is click on OK, and that will send us right back into Photoshop. And here is the before, and here is the after, so I like it. Do you remember when I told you to save masks to channels? Well, if you come down to your channels, you're going to find there's that mask blur mask. Now, my channels happen to be here. Your channels may be sitting somewhere else, or if you don't have your channels, you can come up here to window and make sure you have your channels turned on, okay? But mine happen to be sitting right here, but you can see there's that blur mask. Now, let me show you how we can use it. The first thing we need to do is turn this mask into a selection. So hold down your command or control key and click on that blur mask, and that loads it as a selection. Then come to your adjustment layers and pick any adjustment you want. In my case, I think I'm going to use a brightness contrast adjustment because what I want to do is darken all the blurred areas. So the mask will select all the blurred areas, but it will not select the in-focus areas, okay? So what I can do now is take this brightness and move it to the left. And you notice my folks in the raft are not getting darker, but the areas that are blurred are. I don't want to go too dark with them, but I just want to darken them up a little bit. And I can also work with contrast, give them more contrast or less contrast. But I think I'll just leave the contrast right where it was. But I just wanted to slightly darken up the masked areas just to draw emphasis onto my folks in the raft. Now, the other thing I can do is load this uh, mask back up. I can hold the command or control key down and load it back up again. And this time, let me go ahead and come up to select and invert it by clicking on inverse. And now let's go and get another adjustment layer. And let's get another brightness contrast. This time... It's inverted, right? So now I can lighten up my folks in the raft. So I'm just going to take this brightness adjustment and just lighten it up slightly. Just to draw a little bit more emphasis onto my folks in the raft. So here is the before and here's the after. Now here's a combination of both of those adjustments. Here's the before and here is the after. Just for a quick recap, I used the blur gallery and used the fill blur to uh, draw emphasis to the folks in the raft and blurred out the other areas of the image. I love that creative bokeh effect that I got and I used the blur mask just to darken up the out of focus areas and also inverted it to lighten up the folks in the raft just to draw more emphasis to those folks in the boat because that's where all the action's happening and that's where the fun is going down. Well, there it is, everyone. That was the Blur Gallery. I used the Field Blur today, and you can get some really cool bokeh effects with it. 
You can get those really nice lens baby type effects. I use it on flower photography. I use it on all types of photography. Give it a try. Hey, let me know what you think about it in the comments section below this video and give it a try yourself. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.